How's it going guys? Jackson here with the Toasty Bros and today we're going to be doing a little unboxing of this Biostar X370. Hope you guys enjoy. Well, this is actually AM4, which is, as you know, the new Ryzen CPU type. So what makes this board really interesting is the fact that it's mini ITX. So as you can see, this board is about no bigger than the size of my hand. So what makes this really cool is the fact that AMD actually pretty much just came out with these. I think maybe three to four weeks ago was really the first time they released the mini ITX board. Matt and I have been waiting for a while on one. I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the box here so you guys can see it. We're just gonna go straight in here. So this board on Newegg runs you $109.99, which is actually fairly cheap for a mini ITX board. The only problem is they're almost always out of stock. Matt and I were lucky to even get one after they ran out once. It does, of course, come with the IO shield, which is just your basic metal shield. It doesn't have any of the sound dampening um, foam that a lot of them have. And then it also comes with a really surprising amount of SATA cables. It comes with four SATA cables and it looks like they all are just the straight and straight ones. There's no angled ones in there, which um, personally I like the straight ones better. So this specific board's model is the Biostar X370 GTN. So this is mini ITX, you can see not too much bigger than the size of my hand. It's of course the AM4 slash Ryzen socket type. So you can pick one of these up on Newegg for $109.99 and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go over um, basically any of the specs you're going to want to know about it before you purchase the board. So first things first, I think probably the biggest question you get with most boards is how many RAM slots does it have and how much does it hold? So this holds up to 32 gigs and it can hold up to 16 in each slot. 2667 is the maximum speed of just standard and then you can overclock it to 3200. We have one PCI slot for your graphics card. And then as far as storage goes, you can see we have two SATA ports here and then two here. So in theory you can have up to four hard drives. And it does have onboard audio. It has Realtek ALC 892, which is eight channel. Now it does have two video ports. It has an HDMI and a DVI. So with the DVI, you can do up to 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hertz. And then HDMI, you can do up to 4096 by 2160 at 24 Hertz or 3840 by 2160 at 30 Hertz. Now, as far as USB goes, it's a little complicated how many different types of ports there are, but I'll go ahead and start off with the simplest. There is a USB type C, which is really cool. It's actually what my phone takes. You can see it has the USB C, it's a uh, Google Pixel. And then you can also see we have four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and then we have one right here in the middle, a Gen 2 port. And as far as fans go, typically with these mini ITX boards, you usually only get one fan header. So we do just have one normal system fan header and your standard CPU fan header. A lot of these usually do not come with the USB 3.0. This one does, which is nice. So you have the one USB 3.0 header along with the onboard ones that I showed you a minute ago. We also have two controllable RGB strips right here. So you can actually plug in some type of RGB device, such as if you have some type of special fan header where you can actually change the colors. You can see we do have an audio port right there, so then you can plug that into your case along with your USB. And so that pretty much concludes me kind of showing everything that's kind of cool about this board and just the standard specs of it. Um, I really do like the board and it's going to be used in a lot of my mini ITX builds that I do. Um, a lot of times when I do these custom builds, I don't have room to be using um, full ATX or micro ATX boards. So these work perfect. They're six by seven by six by seven. So they're perfectly square also, which helps. So if you guys stay tuned and check back in, I don't know, a few days from this video, there's going to be a new release of that Ryzen box that I did where I took that Ryzen preview edition box and I put a AMD build inside of that. Well, it was just normal AM1. This one's going to be Ryzen now, so it's actually gonna fit the theme of the build. And I promised I was gonna have that for you guys. So stay tuned and we'll have that uploaded and we'll see you guys later. 